Hey, sorry for the scrappy audio and video today. I am out on travel with family because it is the holidays, but hopefully the audio and video isn't that bad. I know a lot of folks' YouTube comments were saying, oh, I miss the old John Hammond playing Capture the Flag in the back of his car. So hey, this one's for you. <laughs> but it is the holidays, which means it's that time of year again where we get to neglect our family and play a lot of Capture the Flag and do some cybersecurity stuff. And it is that time of year again for the Try Hack Me app advent of cyber. For folks that aren't too familiar with the advent of cyber, you get to learn cybersecurity for free with 24 beginner-friendly challenges running all throughout the month of December, starting December 1st with over $150,000 in prizes. I'm on the website now. I'll have a link in the video description if you're interested. TryHackMe does this every year and it's phenomenal every single time. The best part is it is completely free. Anyone can join. It is a super fun event with tons of characters a whole storyline, a new challenge every day leading up until Christmas. This time around, we get to investigate and outsmart King Malhair's chaotic holiday scheme. There are prizes for participants, there are certificates for participants, and you get to learn a whole lot of cybersecurity stuff. Exploitation with curl, web app security, phishing, malware, AWS, some cloud work, and it's all getting started super duper soon. It is on TryHackMe, and of course, link in the video description, but I did want to let you know, TryHackMe is still doing their Black Friday deal, and it is their best deal of the entire year. It is 40% off their annual subscription. That does end December 1st. The start of the new month, but it converts to 35% off through the end of Advent of Cyber. If you've been thinking about learning cybersecurity, this is the best time of the year to join, and I'd encourage you, hey, upgrade to that annual subscription. Definitely take advantage of this deal. You can use the code JOHNBF, my first name, John, J-O-H-N, and the letters BF for Black Friday to get that Black Friday discount. Link below in the video description. Anyway, back to Advent of Cyber. Completely free, beginner-friendly, perfect for anyone with with zero cybersecurity experience wanting to dive in. This is, without a doubt, TriHackMe's biggest advent of cyber event yet. And there's a super cool storyline here. The snow falls over Wareville, but the spirit of Sockmus is under siege. McSkitty is gone, and King Malhair is spreading chaos from Hopsec Island, hijacking present systems and joy itself. So we've got to play along with every challenge that's released each day throughout the month of December. You can see a little teaser for each them here, but you'll note there is a warm-up challenge already available for us. So for this video, I want to get started with the prep track. This is where we can see all the sweet stuff from TriHackMe really shine, because look, there are over 6 million people to play on TriHackMe. Over 6 million learners worldwide. And the coolest thing about TriHackMe is that all of it is available right away. Instant access, it's all in the browser. You don't need to install any software or have any specific sort of hardware. You can just dive in. There are structured learning paths just like this, and you're doing real hacking. Not just theory, but hands-on practical stuff. It's gamified learning, so of course there's a leaderboard and prizes. And take a look at some of these. These are wild. Five MacBook Airs, TriHackMe subscriptions, iPhones, Apple AirPods, monitors, swag gift cards, flipper zeros, keyboards, rubber duckies, DEF CON tickets, the list goes on and on. And these are chosen at random. All the participants, everyone that joins the fun here. They're contacted at the end of the month in January. Anyway, let's get to the fun stuff. Oh, you do get a certificate though. That's going to be pretty awesome to share on LinkedIn. Prove your achievement. All right, let's get to it. Let me click check. I did read all that, at least super speedy. Had a cutesy little notification there. Let me take a look at how to use TryHackMe. We'll speed run through this because maybe a lot of folks already know how to do this, but you'll be able to start a whole virtual machine or interact with the environment just beside this playthrough here. The TryHackMe attack box can spin up in a split screen sort of display so that you'll be able to interact with the task and the challenge all beside your environment. Let me turn off those sound notifications here and let's get to the storyline. The snow is falling in Wareville, home of the best festival company. Company, and we're preparing for Sockmus, the annual cybersecurity celebration, but something's not right. King Malhair is entering the game. Before we can join the Sockmus response team, we gotta work through 10 short missions to be able to make sure we're ready. So in each of these little challenges below, we can go ahead and click view site in the top right corner, and that way we could follow along. This one is called Password Pandemonium, and remember at the top, we'll have to click view site, and that'll spin it up in the split screen display. So look at this. As you 
log in to the best festival company workstation, apparently there are some weak passwords. Even McSkitty's old credentials were password one, two, three, with some leet speak at sign zero fancy pass, right? So this is a simple task. We just need to update with a new password. Let me go ahead and click the button to update password. And to be honest, I really like to use a password manager. Personally, I've been using Proton Pass lately, so maybe a quick little shortcut, but even just using a Proton Pass or any other password manager browser extension, I could generate a new password. And we could make however many things we'd like, but using a passphrase or some strong memorable password helps us be able to type that if we ever need to, or you could make it something completely random with however many characters you want. Personally, I really like using some sort of passphrase, still using the special characters and symbols. So I can copy this. Let's submit that as our new password, and that meets all the criteria that we need for security. Let me click submit. And now we have a flag or password, the specific key and token that we could submit on the scoreboard. Let me scroll back down to that submission box. I'll hit paste, and then we have that one done. Let's keep cruising. Challenge two is all about a suspicious chocolate.exe. Okay, remember, let's click view site, and we don't need to remember any password here. No, thank you, Prave. A shiny USB drive labeled the Sock Miss Party Playlist appears on your desk. Inside it is a mysterious file called chocolate.exe, like a Windows executable file, right? It looks festive, but who sent it? In this challenge, you'll scan the file using a simulated virus total to be able to determine whether or not it is malicious. So all we gotta do is press the scan button here. My face might be in the way. Once I click that button, though, we can see the results. Looks like Malhair Trojan is being detected from Malhair Labs, and a lot of other vendors or a lot of the other antivirus engines that something like Virus Total might use to check is this file malicious or malware or not. Well, they're saying it's clean. Oh, thank you, Echo. I appreciate you jumping in. That's their cool AI assistant that they're helping out with. But in this scenario, only one out of 50 vendors detected this chocolate.exe file as being malicious. Truth be told, I would probably err on the side of caution here. Like, if anything thought, hey, that's malicious, I'm gonna still be a little bit vigilant. I'm probably not gonna run that. I'd say that's malicious. So I'll click submit, and there it is. You caught the first whiff of Malhair's mischief. That file, chocolate.exe, was bait. And here's our flag, THM, not so sweet. We could copy, go ahead and paste this in, and mark that challenge as done. Excellent. Now we've got the attack box for challenge three. Let's click view site once again to get into that environment. You step into the best festival company's attack box, a secure virtual environment built for training. So we probably want to learn a little bit of the command line here, like being able to type and enter specific programs or commands we want to run inside of a virtual machine, like the attack box. And notes here we could use help to see the available commands, and it even prompts us here we could use ls to list files, use cd to like change directory into a different folder, and then cat to display or type out any specific file. So let's change directory into challenges, just as it said. Let's use ls to list stuff or try to see what files are there, and then we can cat out or display, type, and show on the screen our welcome.txt. There it is. Now we have our flag, THM, ready to hack, and we can submit that with the copy button here to paste this in and check our work. Another one done. What do we got for challenge four, the CMD conundrum? Let's click view site. McSkitty's workstation shows signs of tampering, suspicious files moved, logs wiped, and a strange folder named mystery data. Now let's use the Windows command prompt to uncover what's hidden. So this is going to have a couple different commands to run. Like, rather than the Linux side of the house that we were in in the previous challenge from the attack box, when we use something like ls to list files, ls without caps lock on, Windows and cmd.exe, or that old school Windows command prompt, doesn't actually have support for that. They use dir to list out directory contents. You can even use different arguments or parameters like dir slash, like a forward slash to denote some other configuration switch, and we'll use slash a to specify I want all files, even some special hidden files. There's nothing here now, but maybe if we were to change directory or move into this mystery data folder or directory, let's use dir slash a once again. There we go. Now we have a hidden flag.txt. And we can't use cat in this situation. We'll have to use type because again, the Windows command prompt cmd.exe doesn't know what cat is. Type is the proper command for that, and we'll type out our hidden flag.txt. I'll hit enter, and where is McSkitty? Let's copy and paste, and we're done.
Nice. Let's keep cruising. What's challenge five look like? Okay, Linux. Back to a Linux command line. Let's hit view site here. Now we're using some other arguments and parameters, just like we did in the Windows world, but with Linux. You don't always see like a forward slash, or slash A like we did with DIR. We're going back to LS, but they normally use just a hyphen or a minus symbol, a dash or attack to then list hidden messages, hidden files in the directory. So let's LS, see where we are right now. Looks like we could move into the home directory, or we could use an absolute path, just like they mentioned here, with the Linux file system noting it starts with a forward slash. So let's CD just to that absolute path, rather than the relative path I was using just from one position, one directory and folder to the next. I could just CD McSkitty, but now I want to CD slash home slash McSkitty, and we're going all the way from the whole file system. Let's LS. We only see read text, but let's use ls tack l, and that lists with a long format here. You can see even some of the permissions, who owns the file, when it was created, but let's use ls tack a, which now shows the hidden files. Remember that all. And we can combine these ls tack l and a to see the long format of all files. In Linux, a file that is preceded with a dot or a period at the very beginning usually means that's a hidden file. It's not going to be displayed by default when you just ls or list stuff right from the start. So since we know the name of that file now, we could cat Linux world, cat our dot secret message. We display that and we have our flag, thm trust no bun. Cool. Let's copy that, paste it in, and let's keep going. Well done. We're almost at the end here. Let's get to challenge six. Let's click view site to display that. And ooh, we have like a simulated have I been pwned database. The leak in the list. Rumors swirl that the best festival company's data has been leaked. Emails are bouncing and the staff is panicking. McSkitty suspects his account might have been part of a breach. So we could use tools like the real have I been pwned website. And they include a link here for that. This is Troy Hunt's super cool utility, Have I Been Pwned, just a website, haveibeenpwned.com, that sort of aggregates a lot of real world, actual, real data breaches to know if your information is out and about. You could enter your email address there and see if any of your records have ever been leaked out to the whole world because of some recent hack. Anyway, let's do this with the simulated Have I Been Pwned utility in the Try Hack Me Advent of Cyber prep track. We'll need to enter McSkitty's email address, McSkitty at T BFC, the best festival company, we can just paste that in and click check. And uh oh, that has been pwned. We'll need to identify the one that is marked compromised, and that's from hopsec.io. So if I click this, okay, yep, they are tracking, and looks like that gave us the flag. We found THM leaked and found. We can copy that, paste it in, and that was another sweet, simple showcase of another utility that might be helpful for you in your own cybersecurity career. Now we're doing some Wi Fi stuff. Let me click view site, the best festival company drones are looping endlessly over Wareville Square. Someone logged into the company router using default credentials. Oh, okay. Securing Wi-Fi is critical. Default passwords are like leaving the front gate wide open. So they probably just left admin admin as the username and password. So we could log in with that just as well. Admin admin, type in the username and password, click log in, and now let's create another new strong password. We could do the very same, even just fill in something out like a simple password manager. I'm going to generate another quick one here with Proton Pass. Paste that here, paste that here, and now we could click save, and there we go. That's all we needed to do was change and correct that password so it's not the default anymore. No more default credentials. Let's click copy, paste and keep cruising. All right, next up is the app trap. Let's click view site. McSkinny's social account started posting some strange messages about Eastmas. Maybe his mobile application, something on his phone, had more permissions than it should have. Like, uh-oh, some of the things he had installed had other privileges that it didn't need, like access to passwords. So in a simulated scenario here, we could click in to each and every one of these applications on McSkinny's phone and try to see which of 
them actually have the password vault access. Clicking through each of these, looks like Eastmas Scheduler does have password vault displayed here. That's what we're looking for. We could just click revoke and that's it. Simple, small little task. Now that access is revoked and we won't be able to see McSkitty's account compromised again. Chatbot confession. Oh, we're doing some AI stuff. Festive bot was meant to write helpful, cheerful letters or emails, but it's been spilling secrets. Some messages even reveal internal URLs or passwords and credentials. So we've got to look through all of the past messages from Festive bot and try to see which of these are bad. What we don't want to have leaked by AI. One of these here looks like a pretty clear URL, https internal.tbfc.local slash admin. Yeah, that probably is sensitive. Scrolling down, I see email credentials, another password that's included here, and even a service token for an API. Definitely don't want to have those leaked. Scrolling through, those look like the only ones that are glaring. Everything else does look a little bit helpful, or at least innocent, right? Let's click submit, and that's it. Don't feed the bot. Copy and paste that one. Okay, we're moving on to challenge 10 here. Bunny's browser trail. Web servers are showing heavy traffic, but one log entry sticks out like a user agent. Now that's sort of the identifying fingerprint that your client side web browser sends to different servers or websites that it connects to. Let's click view site so we can interact with this one. We need to find this unusual user agent. That header, that data, that text or string that's included with some of these communications. We can see a lot of regular or normal user agents here, but we're looking for the odd one out, the Bunny OS. And it looks like I see it here going to an admin panel, and that is certainly the problematic entry. So let me click submit with that one selected, and there we go. We tracked that down. Yep, that was our bad entry. Let's go ahead and copy and paste this one. But with that, I think we're done. We can get to the finish line and read a little bit more about all this stuff. If I exit split screen view here, we could see, consider yourself warmed up. That was it. Some small, simple tasks to be able to get our feet wet, to be able to whet our appetite for the real Advent of Cyber 2025. And this was cool. This was handy. These were some sweet little presentations just to be able to get the idea for, look, what we should be doing in cybersecurity. Don't leave default credentials behind. Don't let AI leak any info. Don't let your passwords be insecure. Email addresses out in data breaches. This is still all the right stuff. So I'm looking forward to Advent to Cyber 2025, and I hope you are too. We did it! The prep track is complete. Look, I'll be diving into the Advent to Cyber this year with Try Hack Me. Once I'm back home from holiday travel time, I'm going to be showcasing and walking through one of the day exercises, one of those daily challenges, and I hope I'll be able to tackle a whole lot more. But truly, the event is for you. It's for you to learn some cybersecurity stuff, to have a whole lot of community involvement, to be present there with everyone else involved in this and sharing your success, getting those certificates out the door, winning some sweet prizes, learning cybersecurity, and walking through beginner-friendly, free, accessible, and real, hands-on, practical hacking and cybersecurity. So check it out. Link below in the video description. Dive into the Try Hack Me annual subscription. You can use code JOHNBF to snag some of those Black Friday discounts. And thank you again and again for watching this video. I hope you were able to tolerate my scrappy video and audio while I'm out and about. <laughs> See you for Advent to Cyber 2020. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.